The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome back to the session of how I went from minus 50% to 120%. I hope the audio uh, quality is better this time and you can hear me loud and clear. We ended the last session after explaining my two most reliable buying techniques and how I what features and characteristics I look for in a trade after I've taken a position. For example, I explained how what I uh, follow buying is a tennis ball action. And uh, so th this helps in uh, deciding whether I should stay in the trade or um, take my money out and move into some other stock. In this session, I'm going to talk a little more on the volatility contraction pattern. The short name is VCP pattern. I will also introduce another style of trade that I take, which I uh, did not cover in the last session. In this session, I'm going to talk about, uh, which was left last time, the stop loss calculation, position size, how I trail my stops to uh, protect the gains that I'm making in a trade, how I add more on the way up and why I add on the way up and not when the stock is going down. And finally, how I nail the profits, close my pro position uh, in profit. I'm going to talk about, in the end, about how we can compound these gains to grow the account capital faster in a very short period of time. Before I move on to discussing the patterns and the calculations I do, I'd like to tell you that this event is again sponsored by Spider Software. Uh, this is the software that I use to analyze uh, my uh, trades. It's a good software that I've been using for the last eight, nine years, and this is the only reason I'm endorsing it. The, the main job that it gets done is that it lets me scan stocks which are within 25% of 52 week uh, high. So moving on, Somebody had asked me why I don't trade stocks which are listed in futures, why I only trade equity segment. So my answer is pretty clear and simple to understand. When a company issues shares, not all of them are made available to the public for trading. A big chunk is held by the promoter and the government institutions. The remaining chunk is <clears throat> publicly traded which is known as free float. Stocks listed in this derivative segment have high free float, which means uh, the supply in the market is on a higher side. So it will take a huge demand in comparison to the companies listed in equity segment to, uh, to increase the price of uh, the stocks in derivative segment. This is why we do not see rise of 100 200x in 100 200% in in about 6 months or 5 months in in derivatives which is pretty common in in the stocks that are listed in equity segment So I explained uh, the reason why I only trade stocks in uh, cash segment. The reason is free float. Let me show you an example where uh, how you can see the available free float of a company. All you have to do is go to bsaindia.com. Let's see the free float of, let's say, ITC. So you type ITC here and scroll down. This is this one you see is free float of ITC. This is the total market cap out of which available 
supply in the market is this much. That's uh, this figure is in uh, one second. So yeah, this is the free float of ITC. This figure is in crores as mentioned here. This is uh, now compare, now check the companies that are listed in stocks. Let's say, uh, let's just check IB Ventures or let's check BEPL. So the float of BEPL is only 1269 crores compared to Two lakh crores of ITC in the market, so you can. It's it's pretty common sense to understand uh, why uh, the speed of BEPL is faster than uh, the rise of any stock in listed in in FNO segment. Most of the stocks that I trade in uh, more of the most of the stocks that you will find in your scans, the Free float will be less than 5000 crores. I can show you another example. Let's just check a recent trade HEG that I just took. The free float is around 5000. This is an acceptable number. I can show you another trade. Let's check Sun Flag. Oh, it's a wrong symbol. IB Ventures. IB Ventures is one exception. It's been going up, but 8,000 8, crores, but way less than what's listed in uh, the stocks of uh, FNO stocks. We can check BPL or Mark Electronics. That okay, let's just check BPL. It's, I don't know why it's not showing Mark here. Okay, now it's showing. So the float of Mark Electronic is only 323 crores. This is like a very small micro cap company, a little demand by any one institutions or few institutions can ramp up the price dramatically. This is one trade where I made 100% in just three to four weeks. So this is one reason where, uh, why I trade these stocks. So what is an acceptable number if, uh, any any company with an available float of about 5000 crores is 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 tradable you should trade such stocks any lower the better of course but don't get stuck on to this figure that why you took a trade of 8000 crores or 7000 crores this is a fair idea my point is these fno stocks have floats of I, i'll show you one more fno stock here let's just check tcs Look at the float of TCS versus compared with Merck Electronic BPL. These companies have float of only 300, 400 crores and TCS has a float of about, almost about 2 lakh crores in the market. So I don't want to trade TCS because it will take huge buying power or uh, to see a dramatic rise in TCS. So I this is, I, this is why I do not... Uh, trade that stock so moving on to uh, the pattern that i trade like i said i want to explain more on vcp and then i will with along with explanation of vcp i will explain the calculation of stop loss and uh, position size and all the other calculations that i do so let's just uh, let me what is exactly vcp i'll give you an example of a trade and uh, we'll explain using the demand and supply principle of so that even you don't have to get into the technicalities of looking at the chart and getting confused even a simple demand and supply analysis without the use of any indicator you can understand what vcp looks like <clears throat> 
So we have this dog graphite. So if you see one second. So this is a char of graphite, and uh, I'll explain you what the concept of VCP. The stock is in a clear uprint, as you can see here. This stock already meets my the criteria that explained I explained in the session one. If uh, it's it's the 200 moving average line is trending up for more than three months, which was the first condition. As you can see, 50 moving average is above the red line. Current price is above both green and the red line and the stock is way more than 100% from 52 week low. The 52 week low of this the 52 week low of this stock i have plotted the indicator here the 200 moving line is trending this red line is the 200 moving line it's been trending up for more than three months the green line is also trending up and it's above the red line the current price is above red in the green line and the other condition was that the current price should be at least 100% up from the 52 week low. In this case, it's way more than 100% up. So this stock meets all my conditions. So now also the last 52 week low was made in January. So this also the last condition of 52 week low that I had explained in session one also fits here. Now I will remove these lines because I don't use them to make my buying decisions. Keep, you need to keep it simple. You don't need any indicator to actually uh, give you a confirmation. All you need to do is do simple demand and supply analysis and not depend on indicators which actually take current price to calculate the value of itself. So here in this case, graphite is in a clear uptrend. As you can see, this is the first requirement of a VCP pattern. After a huge run up from here, 110 the stock reached 900 now at some point the buying will of course uh, take a pause those who had enter at lower levels let's say here or here they would look to book some profit which means they will sell stocks and the absence of buying and decisions of these traders that they are that looking to sell their stocks it leads to crack a drop in the 
price of the stock. So now we have to see if how far this drop will go. So the sellers started selling from 900 and got the stock to 600. But at 600, some buying emerged. Some short term buyers or uh, value buyers, they, they <clears throat> created demand here and the stock reached the highest point from here is this. This, the buy, this buying was not very strong because it failed to take previous high. Then selling resumed again. But this time, the lowest point it made is this 620, which is above the last point. So I can say that this, the group of sellers here involved here are weaker than the group of sellers here. It also means the buyers involved were stronger because they stopped the drop in price at around this level and they managed to take the stock higher. So there is a battle going on between buyers and sellers. But here, so far the buyers are winning because they are not letting the sellers bears in the stock break the previous low of the stock. So this is how I analyze the tone in this particular trade and see from here the buyers managed to take the price to almost the previous swing high but they failed to cross it. Now I have to see if sellers are able to break this level or not but if you see they could only this time bring the stock to 720 level. So this is a very healthy uh, contraction here. If I can say so far, the buyers have an upper hand. If you want to do the calculation to confirm it, what you need to do is you need to calculate the vol volatility drop from this point. This is the highest point of first contraction to this and then calculate. Let me calculate for you. <clears throat> This high is about 900 and this low is about 595. So this is a drop of 34%. From here, it's 815 to a drop of 615. A drop of a contraction of 24%. So last time it was around 34. This time it's only 24. It's not a great drop because ideally the contraction should be half of the previous one. So if this is 34, the best would have been 17 or 18, somewhere around that. But it's not really damaging. I would still continue to look at the stock. Now if you, the third contraction, this was first, this is second. Now the third one. Look at it. By just looking at it, I can say it's the contraction is way smaller, and it's a very healthy sign that the stock uh, can take out this high very easily. Let me just calculate this level. This high is 7.95, and the lowest point is 7.24. So this contraction is comes to 9%. Last one was 24%. This time the drop is way more than 50%. It has now come to 9%. This is a very healthy sign. So a good VCP always has three contractions. Look, this is one, this is two, and the current, the latest one is three. And the third contraction is the most healthiest one. It stopped at 9%. So now for me, this is the highest point where I can, I would place my buying bid and uh, do my calculations before uh, stop loss calculation, the quantity calculation, which is called position size for taking a trade, which I will explain you how I do that. So if, now you see this was this happened day before. If you place your bids here, 795, the stock actually 
went because this is the line of least resistance look at the the force of the candle now the buyers are back the volume is high how easily it crosses this level because this all the selling from here to here was absorbed the supply was absorbed by these buyers now this line was very easy to uh, take out and with very little buying this price this level was crossed and from 795 the stock touched 845 in just one session so this is how healthy bcp looks like there are certain exceptions there is one more factor there should be a price con along with the price contraction there should be a time contraction also so if you see here the time taken to form the first base is this is 4th january and this is 19th march so about two and a half months from here to here this is 19th march to 10th may so almost two months here so not a big drop like just like there was no major price volatility drop similarly the time drop is also not massive but it's acceptable but if you see in the latest contraction the time drop from 2 months is only 5 days it's only 5 days so it's way more than 50% it's a great exceptional sign that you will see rarely and this is the reason why i had decided to take this trade so when i decide to take a trade what i the only thing that i know is that this trade has high probability of working in my favor that's all i know i do not know whether this trade will give me 100% returns in 2 days or it'll take 6 months all i know is that it has high chances of working in my favor when you accept that when you accept this fact that you can only control your decisions based on what you're looking and forget about the outcome your trading will get a lot easier you will not pressure yourself you will not really expect a uh, stock to give you 100% and if it does not uh, uh, you will not feel stressful so all you have to do is you have to do what's in your hands the outcome is not in your hands you have to just pick the right trades at the right time and then let the stock do its job so here let's say let's just take this trade in real example i'll tell you how i calculated <coughs> uh, my stop so i know that i will enter the stock above the high of this price the high is 795 let's say i will 796 so let's say i will enter once this level is taken out let's just take my buying uh, trigger price as 797 so i have this uh i have this sheet that i will send you after the seminar ends where which is which i use to calculate my stop and uh, the quantity that i will buy so my entry price is clear based on the charts it's 796 the entry this is where you will uh, enter this price now i will show you how i calculate stop let me pull up a slide for you okay stop loss calculation you need to plot an indicator called atr which is average true range it's available in all the software all the websites but because i only use spider i will show you how I, it works here you need to plot a 20 period atr on the daily chart change the period to 20 and click add this is your atr value so on this date 16th of may the atr value was 34.88 what i do is i take twice of this value to calculate my stop 
so in this case my buying is 796 let's 797 i'm sorry the atr is 34.88 let's just say 35 so twice the value of atr on a 20 period comes out to be 70 now you need to deduct 70 from the buying price the number comes out to 727 that's your stop loss that's where you will place your stops now go back to the sheet where you calculate the quantity put 727 in this red box and you will get four options of at different risk levels i'll, ex I'll explain you which level uh, i start with and which level one should start with when starting out i've taken a, a default uh, setting of net worth of 110 lakh here so if you have let's say 10 lakhs in your account and you want to take one trade this sheet will let you calculate the quantity based on the risk that you have in this trade here the risk here the risk is 9.2% on investment but if you i'm sorry the risk is so if you place you do this calculation you have to when you take the first entry you have to risk only half a percent of your account total money that is available with you in this case it's 10 lakhs so half a percent of 10 lakhs is at risk in every trade when you take uniform risk you the entire process gets mechanical you will use less emotions because you it gets a lot of, gives you a lot of stress when you take too much risk and more so when the position goes against you so to eliminate the emotions and bias we always take one figure where it's uniform with every trade so in i start with half a percent risk per trade even after an experience of what six seven years i still do not take more than the, my first entry is always with half a percent so if i have 10 lakhs and if i put this buying price and the stop loss price this is the quantity that I have to buy it this it takes into account the brokerage and the commission that you have to buy so i know that i have to buy 50 shares at i have to buy 50 shares at this price so now i have the stop loss level and i know my quantity how much i want to buy at this level I will place my buying bid here of 50 shares and I'm in this trade now with 50 shares because this is a very recent example I will do the post buying evaluation every day and will decide whether it's behaving good whether I should stay in it add more or cut it and get out of the stock my main objective is one should always be risk averse we all especially the beginners they always look for at profits my advice to you is look at risk first calculate your risk let the market do the rest for you if you have done the right risk management if you have placed the right amount of bet on a particular trade and you don't interfere with your process the market will give you good returns 
as long as you find a good trending stock. So in this case, this is a recent example. So we will follow up. So in few days, we'll get to know whether this is working right or not. And I'll give you another example where VCP worked. This stock called Sorrel Infla. When I had traded it, it used to be known as Store One. Let me pull the stock. So this is how it looked like when I was watching it back in 2016, 17th of June. This is the daily chart. And this is how the weekly chart looked like. So on a daily chart, if I zoom in, there was a clear uptrend, my first requirement of VCP. Now the stock is in consolidation, pulling back. But let's see if it's pulling back in the right manner. If you see, this is the first contraction. Then it contracted only this much. And then there was the third contraction from here to here. Let's just calculate these numbers. If you do the calculation from here to here, it comes out to Let's just do a live calculation. This is 160. This is 120. This is 25% drop from this point to this. Now from here, 151 to 120. Drop of a contraction of 20%. So from 25 to 20, not a good drop. So I will not really get excited in this trade, but I will not stop looking at it and I'll evaluate for more days to see if it's setting up right. From here, it's 140 to 127. The drop is 9%. So from 24, 25 to 20, now the drop is more than half percent and it has three contractions, which is what I need. Three contractions and a healthy drop of more than five, uh, 20, 50%. This fits my VCP criteria. I will place my bid on the highest point of the latest contraction, which in this case is 140. The same way, now I will, now I know my entry price, I will, Put my entry price here. Do my stop calculation. The ATR on the latest candle is latest bar is 10. Double of this value is 20. So 20 you need to deduct from your buying price. Entry price comes out to 120. Now there is one exception. The risk here comes out to 14% on this particular trade. I normally do not go more than 10%, so I will, 10 is my maximum limit. So let's, I think 10 works out to be, this is 10%. This is where my max stop level, loss level is. So I will enter at 140 and my risk I will get out at 126.50. Like I said, this is my first entry in this particular in this stock, so I will not risk more than half a percent of my total net worth on this account, on this trade. I mean, so this gives me my position size, which is 400 shares. 
I will place my bid just above 140 and see how it pans out. On 17th of June, this is how it looked like. And it filled me the very next day. Closed at about 140.70. I was in this trade here. And now my I'm I'm invested in this stock. Now I need to view it, review it on daily basis after the closing and see if it's setting up right. If there is a need to, to stay in the stock, add more or uh, just if there is a need to cut the trade or no. So I will go one by one and see how I'll show you how it turned out for me. The next day, this is how it opened a gap up and closed at the highest level, a very good sign. And this gap up was with volume. See here, good sign. There is absolutely no reason for me to close this trade. This is one reason. These are the stocks that I look uh, where I want to add more and make most of it. When you start a trade and from the get go, you get you are in profit. These are the uh, trades that you should invest more instead of looking for a new stock to invest. You are look for the right opportunity in the same stock. This is known as pyramiding. This is how you buy on the way up. So we just don't buy without just because it's going up. We wait for the right opportunity. So my first, I would give you my first indicator is like if the stock is 5% has gone up 5% up from my entry point. This is then I would look for a re-entry or a place where I can add more of this stock. The stock is already uh, up here by more than 5%. And uh, now I will look for in coming days, I will look for an opportunity to add more. The next day, this is how it opened and closed even higher with equally high volume. I'm happy, but I don't have my second trade yet. Now, the stock, there was some profit booking. There was, it fell from 170 to 155, but it has no volume. So I have no reason to worry. I have to give the stocks uh, the room to do its own thing. And unless there is a massive drop with volume or my stop gets hit, which was 126, I will not close this trade. You, I have to stick to the process, which I have stuck to, to get those huge gains, because that's the only way you can uh, get massive returns. There is one more thing that I would like to uh, cover here, how to trail your stops when the stock is already in up in your favor. So you entered at 140, the stock is already 162. You trail your stop by using the same ATR. The ATR here is 11 now almost. So the twice of 11 is 22. Now the, on this bar, the closing price is 162. So I deduct 162 from uh, I deduct 22 from 162, the value comes to 140. So the trade which was uh, initial stop was 126.50. Now my new stop is, I have trailed it to 140. Now I can say that I am at a break even. It is a huge psychological win. You cannot lose money from your pocket in this trade. Now my first entry is free. I can look for another entry, go for bigger risks because my first trade is, is already giving me, uh, is free for me. So this is how I uh, go and take bigger risks in the same stock. Now, after two days, the stock fell to about, almost hit my stop, but never really triggered it. And, uh, Next day, there was a relief, a bounce next bounce to about 152. For three days, the stock went into sideways motion because 
and with no volume this is a healthy sign i want to add more of it and i will add like i said the volatility was from here to here then it went from here to this level so this is my highest swing level i will place my new buying bid above the high of this level which is what i did now the same thing use the same atr value to calculate your stop in this case the value is 12 11.77 11.77 if you see so the twice of it is 24 above this is where you will enter your trade above 161 deduct 24 of them from 161 and you will get your stop loss level but like i said this is i cannot take more than 10 percent so i will reduce it to i will keep the max limit to 145.50 now this time as i said i'm going to take bigger risk because one the stock is already proven itself my first trade is free i don't have any risk on it i will not lose money from my own uh, pocket so now i'm willing to take bigger risk and make the most of it this time instead of taking half percent risk per trade i'm going to take one percent risk using these two numbers this comes out to be 600 shares and i placed my bid just above this so you will place your bid above 161 or 600 shares your stop is 146.50 so if even if it hits stop if it if it hits your stop the maximum that you can lose in this trade is one percent of your account but there is no limit to how much you can make if this stock really does well so your risk is only one percent let's see how this stock turned out for me it filled me the very next day and went on like this for next four days it made a high of 235 and this is how it looked now you trail your stop using the same atr calculation atr value here is 14.5 wise of it is 29 you deduct 29 from the closing price which is 226 comes up to 197 is your stop the price went higher there's a new high closing so we will do the same calculation again the atr and trail your stop the atr now is 15.6 let's round it off to 16 twice of it is 32 we deduct 32 from the latest closing price which is 237 32 out of 237 comes out to be 205 is your trailing stop you have two positions one at half a percent risk and the second one was where you took one percent risk now your stop is one uh, sorry two zero five both your trades you are in profit you cannot lose money from your um from your account and you have locked in some gains your first entry was at 140 the second was at 161 and now your trailing stop is two zero five and after two days it stopped me out so final figures is 205 i'm sorry now i'll show you the trading log that i use to record all my trades this is one practice let me tell you you have to have to follow because without this you will not be able to study your own trades and you just cannot review and improve the mistakes that you've done it's the 
one major requirement if you need to be successful at trading you need to record all the trades that you've taken so let me just put this is this sheet i'm going to mail you like the other sheet here i will i record all my trades for example i'll show you this particular trade sorrel infra i bought 400 shares at 140 initially uh i think the date was 20th june and uh, my stop initial in this sell price column you will write 126.50 which was your initial stop in the selling date column you will write open because the trade as long as this trade stays open you will just write open here initial stop is your original stop that was there in the stock so 140 126.50 your original stop was 10.06 percent this is important i'll explain you why you need to write it here it will help you in calculate in, in uh, making good decisions in the future <clears throat> Hmm. 10.06 these, these wide columns are the columns where you have to type uh, put in the values the rest of the columns have the formula so you it auto calculates everything the last column this one white one is risk percent this is nothing but how much risk did you uh, actually uh, take when you initiated the entry in this case the first trade we had risk only half a percent so I'm going to write 0.5 here. <clears throat> and I'm done. Now my second entry was Sorrel Infra again. This time it was 600 shares. I bought it 161. I bought it on 13th of July. 2016 my original stop was 145.50 which comes out to 10.04 percent but this time i had risked one percent so i will write one here and now this is how you will log every trade in your journal and when whenever you close the trade you just change the value so in this case we finally exited the stock at 205 and we exited on 13th of july The buy date was actually twenty ninth of June, not thirteen July. I'm sorry. So yeah, I have uh, entered all the values and see how much I made. I had risked half a percent first, and then one percent total. I made five percent on this trade in this one single trade. I made five percent wherein 45 percent came from first entry and 26 percent return came on the second entry this column the number of days tells me how many days i had to hold this position so in just under 24 days i made five percent on my total account you don't get such returns in fno futures and this is what this is hence i trade uh, in cash i will now show you another trade that i had taken one second
the other uh, BCP example that I've just taken is graphite, which I've just uh, already explained because it's just a one two days old trade. So I uh, don't. I will review it and will share with you how it actually panned out, whether I exited this one or added more to it. <clears throat> There are certain few possible VCPs in the making, which I want to share with you, which you can see and add on your watch list. The first one is GM. See, this stock is, this is the first base, first, and the second one, and the third one has a sudden uh, time contraction, a uh, drop off. This one took from 4th April to 26th of April, about 20 days, and this one is just four days. So a drop of more than half uh, in time contraction, and if you calculate the uh, price contraction, from here to here, from here to here, and then from here to here. By just looking at it, I can say that this is healthy. Above this price, I will place my bid. This is in the making right now. You can add to your watch list. And if it sets up right, if it takes up this price, I will take this trade and I will tweet it. The second, another one is Dindal Steel. Jindal steel, if you see, this is one contraction from here to here. Then the stock went from here, reached here. And now this time this drop is only from here to here. This is one exception to the pre-contraction count, which I want to cover the exceptions to VCP. I normally prefer three or more, I can take two contractions as long as the drop in the contraction is way more than 70%. I'm not, I will not accept two contractions with a 50% drop. The third one should have more than 70%. So if you calculate from here, it's 295 to 205. The drop is 30%, but from here, 264 to 243, straight just 8%. So from 30%, it's 8%, more than 70% drop. So this is very healthy. And if you calculate the time also, the time it took from here is 3rd of January, 23rd of January, here it's 19th of April, almost two and a half months, and this is only five days. So this took two, two and a half months, and this is only five days, way more than 70% drop in time uh, contraction. I'm happy taking this trade, and I will place my bid here. This is in the making right now. <clears throat> this is actually, there is more to it. It requires more calculation. You calculate from here to here. This is first contraction. This is second. There are three contractions. So I, I gave you uh, this example is actually not the exception one, but even if it, if you see, if, let's just assume this was actually, uh, this is how it would, uh, would pan out. Then I would take it here. But if I go further, I just went further and found out that it there is a third contraction. So this is one. This is two, and even this third one, this is only three days of contraction, way less than this one. And I will place my bid above 265. So this is in the making right now. If it takes out this level with volume, with an increase in volume, if this level is taken out, I will be in this trade and uh, using the same ATR calculation and position 
quantity calculation. So these are the two trades that I found out which are in the making and uh, uh, which you can use them, you can plot them on your watch list and see if it uh, sets up right. Now I'm going to explain you the next pattern that I follow to take trades. But before I explain you, let me tell you that this is actually no uh, pattern that you will find in 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 any book or on the internet. It's not really. Uh, it's basically just reading demand and supply and how the price reacts near the old resistance zone. Uh, when I call when I say resistance, I mean where the price fell from uh, in a massive manner when uh, like few weeks or few months back. So when the price now approaches the same level, it's expected that it will take a lot of difficulty for the stock to cross that level. So we need to see how it reacts this time and we need to study that reaction. If you uh, learn how to study that, it gets very simple in deciding whether the tone is bullish and uh, if there is a high probability of uh, the stock crossing that level or not. So here there is this one trade that I took in uh, 2017. This is RCF. I bought at 62. As you can see, the stock was up. This is a weekly chart. The stock had run up from 40 to 60, about 50% jump in just uh, seven, eight weeks. So th though this is nothing uh, great about it though, but if you see this, there was a, after reaching this level, I, Continue to watch it. I was not in this trade at this time. So after two weeks, after reaching 62, 64, it fell for next two weeks, four weeks actually, and reached this level. But on the next week, in just one week alone, it took out all the highs of last four weeks. This is huge change in sentiment. So you need to understand the demand and supply, the sentiment behind uh, the run. Uh, which the stock is experiencing for four weeks the stock fell and it took just one week to cross all the high points of this uh, of this stock so this is a huge bullish indicator a cent change in sentiment and if you see the drop was had no volume but this rise has a massive increase jump in volume so now I'm interested in this stock, but I need to dig more. So if you see, this is also sort of a, a contraction. From here to here, this is one base, one round base. There is a massive drop for, of, uh, from this is 75 and this is about 35. More than 50, 60% drop, but, and it took what? Two years to complete this base. Now see this after two years, this base took just four weeks. This is a massive drop. This is about 90% drop in time contraction. This is one healthy, very exceptional rare sign that you will see. And if you do the price calculation, price volatility drop, this is way more than 50%. You can do the calculation from here to here, and then from here to here the contraction is way more than 50%. So now here in this case, we're seeing a time contraction of 90% and a price contraction of way more than 70%. I'm interested in the stock. And because this stock closed way, uh, took out four weeks in just one go, I am not, such stocks rarely pull back. I'm not interested in, in getting the a cheap price because there's no cheap price. There's always the right time to, uh, by the stock i'm ju i just want to get into the trade as long as i do the risk management right i am not put going all in i'm putting doing a calculative taking all the all risks are calculative as long as i'm doing that 
it's okay i don't want to really wait for 60 maybe you can get 60 can get 59 but here my mindset is because this trade is very exceptional trade here the contraction is 90 percent time wise and 70 percent price wise i don't want to wait for a, a pullback here i will i just want to get uh, in this trade the very next day which is what i did if you see this closed at 62 and which is i bought at 62 next day i did my calculation on a daily chart i plotted atr this is this is when i bought, bought this stock i this the atr here on that day was two and a half twice of it becomes five you deduct five from your entry price the entry price in my trade was 62 there was it was not a, a trigger point i just bought it market and and placed five points below my entry price the reason why i uh, use average true range to uh, to place my stops is because average true range calculates the volatility of the stock so the volatility of rcf is two and a half points every day so i'm giving double the room for the stock to do its thing and not really stop me out prematurely so i have given a room of five points i did my calculation i calculate my quantity i bought half a percent initially half percent of my uh, account i risked here did my uh, using my atr calculation and i went long at 62 and see the reaction see how it worked out within three days from 60 to it touched 70 that's 10 percent up this is the stock like i said i want to add more within 10 within three days you're getting 10 percent which you don't get in futures this is this is uh now i want to look for a place to add more and if i find an entry i will take one percent this time <clears throat> as i went forward the second entry came here okay so the first was the vcp tone in this pattern now i'll explain the how you read price action near old resistance point i have plotted added a line here this was a massive resistance this line is we can assume that this is a roof a ceiling this is where the stock fell from and it fell more than 50 70 percent so this is i'm assuming this will take will not be easy to cross there will be sellers there will be buyers trapped here those who want to liquidate their uh, position because they had to wait for two years to get their price they don't want they're now impatient and they just want to get out of it so i'm expecting huge selling here because this is a long uh, period of time i'm sure there must be many trapped people who want to just get out so what i'll do is i will study the price here as because i'm expecting some selling here and we'll decide uh, how it reacts based on the price action near this price so if you now see when i scroll next on the see the next bar this is how it reacted the stock i was expecting a massive selling here but look at this the stock went touched that level and closed in green there is no selling the the stock is closing in green it in fact closed higher than the previous bar so this is surprising to me this is one, an indication that oh, there is no selling. I was expecting selling here, but this, there are so many buyers that they have absorbed whatever sellers were there, whatever uh, selling was there, they have absorbed it. So it's a huge indication, a good positive indication to, to look for uh, a second entry in this stock and continue with your first entry. Also, along with this, you need to trail your stop. Your first stop was now your new stop is the atr value on this day is almost three so twice of three is six you deduct six from the current price which is 71 so it comes out to 65 your entry was 62 you're already in a profit of three points like i said it's a huge psychological uh, win for you 
you cannot lose money in this trade in fact you have three points in your pocket you can now go and take bigger risk and as long as the stock is setting up right now i need one more price one more day to actually realize and make my uh, decision whether i want to uh, take another entry in it look what happened the next day this is the rarest of rarest uh, bars that you will ever see like i said i was expecting a massive big bar here a red color bar uh, which would have indicated selling but instead of showing me that it shows lack of selling the buyers have closed the stock higher you need to understand the tone behind it don't just look at the bar the candle or the bar and and get confused you need to understand the meaning of it it clearly says it's a lack of selling where at an important resistance roof area it should have shown some selling because previously the stock <clears throat> previously the stock fell 50% from there but this time look no selling the buyers bulls are have managed to close the stock higher than yesterday it's a huge sign and plus the size the contraction the volatility of this bar is the sh smallest it's a huge bullish signal that you will rarely see in your uh, in trades ever. i i have not seen more than 2 3 times in my entire career this is why i was like excited to go uh, in it and i again just because you have a good pattern does not mean you don't do your risk management you you stay you uh, you need to follow the all the rules even when you have a very good trade of trading opportunity so i did the risk management i placed my uh, buy bid above the high of this price did my you uh, stop loss calculation using atr the atr here is almost 3 so uh, my entry price is 70 above 72 let's say 7250 you deduct 6 6 from it is your stop using this sheet 7250 the limit it's 8.7% within 10% this is how you will calculate your position size now i am want to risk 1% because my first trade is in profit i cannot lose money in it in fact i have three points gain now i'm going uh, with bigger risk this time and i'm buying 1000 1600 shares if i have if you have 10 lakhs this is what it will come out to be <clears throat> and look what happened the next day it took out that level smartly there were there's a huge increase in volume the size of the bar is completely bullish and the run up continued for next two days now i entered at 62 the stock is already at 82 that's about 20 points in just in just few days that's uh, way more than 30 35% returns in just two days and on, and on the second position i'm already making about 12 13% 10 points of gain so because the the stock has closed higher i will trail my stop my new stop would be the atr on this bar is 3.27 i will round out round it off to 3 and a half twice of 3 and a half is 7 deduct it from the current closing price which is 82 here my new stop is 82 minus 7 75 now my both of my positions 60 the one i, I uh, entered at 62 the one i entered at 72 both are in profit now again a huge psychological win you will not lose money in this trade your stop is at 75 in fact now i will look to add even more because i have a cushion to uh, risk more money in this trade it's a new trade my third trade will be completely new for me i i will not look at my uh, one first entry and the second entry because they are already in profit now and i have trailed my stop to a profitable point 
So as I went, uh, continued to review the stock, next four days, the stock went sideways. And this is where this box sideways price action, lack of volume, a very healthy sign, an uptrending stock with sideways price action contained within a small box with a lack of volume is a very healthy sign. I will buy this stock, which is what I did. As you can see here, what more around 84. I you place I placed my bid here on the high of this bar because this is the latest point of least resistance. Above this price, the third entry I initiated using the same ATR stop calculation and calculate my quantity. This time I bought 2% because my half a percent entry was already giving me a good sizable gain of 13 points. The second one was giving me a three point gain. So I was willing to take bigger risk this time. And I did the calculation by above 86. Stop is seven points. within 10% limit and this time my quantity was 2700 and then this is what happened after four five seven eight days the stock touched 99 now on this day i will explain you how i nailed my profit using my own discretion and not uh, did not trail my stop i just closed it using my discretion so this is this you can use uh, this principle you can use to uh, take a call using your own discretion sometimes and and book profit so this move is already extended if you see the stock has been running from 54 to almost 100 that's about 100 percent jump that's that's that really i mean this is not a usual move this happens very rarely and this happened in a very short period of time this is 10th of march and this is 10th of may exactly just in under 60 days the stock doubled so there is going to be a pause at some point and so not that i'm just booking because it's already run up 100 points but this is a warning signal that there will be a pause you should not let the profit go out of your hands so I added one another indicator, simple moving average line of 10 period. To see how far the current price action is from the line. If it's extended, I will look, I will book some profit here. So trading is all about, it's it's an art. It's not a science where, it's not some theorem or formula that you, this is how it works out every time. This is, these are the decisions that you have to take on your own. And because I was already making a huge gain, I had three positions and I was making, I'll show you how much I made. Uh, I was already making a lot of money and I did not want to lose a major chunk out of it. And already the price was giving me a warning signal. This move was extended. The distance between the price and the line is big now. You see, it was it hugged it here, and not just the distance. This here, the price, this angle was 60 degree, and suddenly the, from last four days it has stretched to almost 80, 90 degrees. This is a shows a blank a climax and. Uh, Normally, after seeing a change in the angle of the buying, the price is uh, goes into a sideways price action. So, so again, I'm not booking it yet, but I'm on alert. I'm on guard, and I'm gonna watch it and see if should I wait for uh, for it to trigger my trailing stop, or should I just book it way before that? So this action here, the stock opened at 92, touched 99, but closed at 97. Again, not a warning signal, not a signal 
alone to like really decide and close the trade but next day there was another after two days there was another jump but the stock failed to cross this level and it closed at the lowest price and this had higher volume so the price is struggling to cross 100 and not really taking out and it has already gone up 100 percent in just few days the, i already have two reasons to to lock in my gains and the third and the final reason that really had helped me realize i made my decision which was this gap this gap from here to here is at the top of the trend is known as is exhaustion gap exhaustion gap indicates that stock is tired and this is the last buying that uh, you will see in stock for for the next few days so there's no point waiting sitting with dead duck and locking your money in a dead trade and the best objective is to maximize your gains take the money out and look for a best opportunity so i closed my trade the next day at 94 you can see i closed my trade at 94 three trades i took let me show you how much i actually made by just risking one half percent one percent i was never at a uh, risk actually to be honest if you do the math i was never at risk uh, by more than a half a percent so i took rcf price first was at 62 my stop with using atr was this the quantity came out to be 1000 62.57 i'm not checking the dates right now it's not relevant for this uh, presentation the initial stop was 849 and the last column i risked half a percent so i will keep it as it is the second one i bought at 72.50 above the high of this bar so the atr on this day was six points my stop was 66.50 72.50 76 66.50 my stop is within 10 percent limit and this time i risked one percent so the quantity i bought was this original stop is 8.7 and this time i risked one so i'll put one here my third entry was at 86 and my stop was 79 86 79 within 10 percent limit now because i was already in profit and i had trailed my stop to 75 which means i there is no possibility of losing money from my pocket in the first two entries so i went and took bigger risk of two percent this time the quantity was 2700 and finally uh, so i like two here because this is two percent and when i finally closed it at 94 just see how much i made by just risking half a percent this is i made 51 percent in first trade 30 percent in second and nine percent per trade in number of okay it's not showing number of days because i have not added dates here but you can see it's 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 just under two months and in just six in just uh, 60 days this is my total return eight and a half percent return by just risking half a percent so it's like 16 times your risk in just one trade in 60 days this is how you make massive gains. This is how you uh, grow your account much faster.
you keep your losses small we risk only half percent and when it works it works and gives you uh, returns like this so uh, this is when we lose we lose small we keep our losses small but when we win we win big you don't really find trades like this every day but let me tell you you need just five to ten trades in a year like this to have triple digit kind of returns as long as you keeping you have a good system where you keeping your win or your losses small and your win size is big here my win size is i bought at 62 i kept buying on the way up which is what one should do because when you buy on the way up you're buying strength you're not buying weakness and how do you know it or the stock has strength or best way on best indicator to know is when the price is up that's that shows strength because it has buying so when it goes from 62 to 72 it's strength and so you just need to wait for it to set up again and go for it the second entry the, the need is just to look at the demand and supply force and and uh, uh, do your risk management right everything and leave rest to the market because you cannot control the outcome you can't bring six stock from 62 to 94 but you can do the risk management you can calculate your uh, position based on that and that's all you need to do you need to find a good stock you need to do the risk management you need to calculate the quantity and then sit tight do not interfere with the process focus on the process and then if you focus on the process you will see gains like this this is this is look at look at this i this is how i took the trade i stuck to the state stuck to the process and closed my trade at 60 at 94 and made a 16 times my original risk eight percent on my capital eight and a half percent on my capital in just one trade so this was one example of reading uh, price action near old resistance zone i'll show you one more example which i've just taken two days back <clears throat> using the same uh leading the price action near the old resistance zone let me remove this start line now look at heg this is old resistance zone this is 9th of may i was looking at the stock i had no position on 9th of may it the stock had been going up in a very in just few in just five six days it went up from 2600 to 3200 that's about 30 percent jump and it was approaching this red line i wanted to see i it was expected that this red line would not be easy to cross and there would be some selling and we might just witness bars like like this one a big red bar which means selling here so uh, i just kept it on my watch list and i waited to see how it reacted here and the next day this is how it did exactly as i had expected there was a selling big bar just near this price zone but the selling had less volume so this damage is not that big a damage so I wanted to see one more day and see if it drops here. If uh, it does, I would just delete it. That was my decision, uh, my assumption. And uh, if there was a good positive price action, I would have uh, kept it on my watch list for a few more days and, and taken it above this breakout. And the next day, this is how it worked. So there was a selling, but the next day immediately buyers came back and did not let the price crack further the buyers are back but they're not back with the bank but there is nothing wrong here there is nothing damaging here the sellers failed to take the the stock lower and the buyers have come in the picture and in fact they're trying to take the stock higher again but again this is not enough to for me to take a trade i will wait for another i waited for another day uh, uh to see the price reaction so next day this is how it worked there was a gap the stock opened higher touched the old roof ceiling area where 
the selling was expected and it happened there was selling but this selling is is nothing compared to this this is very small amount of selling here the supply was absorbed by buyers and the buyers bulls managed to close this stock higher than the previous day so here if i understand the tone behind it buyers clearly have an upper hand in this in this entire run i want to see if this there is a breakout if there is a breakout i'm happy taking a trade doing all the risk management tools that i've just explained to you i will take this trade the next day look at this amazing price reaction the third day buyers managed to close the the price at almost the highest point there was no selling the only selling was from here to this point so this roof that i have plotted here which i expected that there will be massive selling but the stock is not cracking in fact the buyers are winning every day now this is when i decided that i want to take this breakout there was a four days sideways price action i placed my bid just above 3300 and did my risk management <clears throat> the atr here was 137 let's just say 140 so twice of 140 is 280 my buying bid was just above 3300 let's just say 3305 ah oh, sorry 33 so the stop came to 3025 within the 10% limit and uh, i wanted to risk only half a percent here i have applied this this column is not showing any figure because i have applied a round of formula uh, if uh, i'll edit it for you the quantity came out to be around if you have 10 lakhs the quantity will come around to be like 25 30 shares in the state so you place your bid here just above the high of the price i place my bid here you can see i went long in hg on 16th of may just two days uh, before three days before and did my risk management calculated my quantity calculated my stop and that's it that's all i can do i do not know how it will work after this i have done my risk management i know that this trade has a higher probability of were going higher because because this entire run has a strong buying power bulls have clear upper hand here that's all i know this is what i can control this is what i used to make my decisions after this you just have to let the market do its job and look what happened the next day there was a huge 9% jump the stock broke out from 3300 touched 3600 almost and the next day this is how uh, it worked i don't have the data from 18th may right now but there was a, a red bar here after this but again in abhi i just will um, i will i will review this trade as because i'm still holding it of this is how i took the breakout and uh, this is how it, it's panning out so far so this is these are the two examples of the understanding how the price works near the old resistance zone if you learn to understand the simple buying force near the uh, old selling zone you can take good trades without using any indicator so rcf was one example heg was another example of uh, trades that i uh, took using the this very simple uh, process so i'm now uh, almost half way into the mark we're going to take a break of about uh, 15 minutes and then uh, we will resume uh, from here so i'll be back in about 15 minutes thank you <laughs> 